welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Photopia, which I have on screen right now. And this app or website, in my opinion, is the best free editor available. I kind of hinted at it in my review of Pixar Mobile, but no mobile app will ever match up anywhere near the capabilities of a desktop application. As for Photopia, I'm really surprised I haven't heard about it up to now and I'm not even sure how it's even legal for them to copy so many of the capabilities that Photoshop has and I'll get into more detail about that momentarily. But this website, yep, you heard that right. It's a website, don't need to download anything. Everything is done through photopia.com. It has much of the same functionality that Photoshop has and it copies even the layout itself. It does change a few icons, so the icons aren't exactly the same, but it's almost a carbon copy of Photoshop. And you can even upload the tutorials, templates that I have in each of my tutorial videos, and I'll upload to Photopia exactly how I had them in Photoshop. As you can see here, we have the base, we have the clipping mask, we have the blending options all set exactly how I had it. Even the colors of the folders and the folders themselves are all here exactly as they were in Photoshop. And if a font is missing, as in the case here where we do not have this font currently uploaded, you can go over to your fonts, click it down and you hit load fonts and it's going to give you the option to upload the OTF or the TTF of the font, which I always include a download link for the font in each video. So that's really simple and even if you don't have Photoshop but you intend to down the road, this is a great introduction to Photoshop because as mentioned it copies so much of the same functionality. Now I do want to mention that they have their own templates here. It's really up to you if you want to use them. I of course have my own templates on my channel, but these are a bit more varied. For example, they have YouTube end screens, thumbnails, and so on and so forth. And I mean, there's not many options here, but it definitely gives you some variety and you can go through and edit them to suit your needs. And for the actual editing, which I'm gonna be very brief about, just because it's so similar to Photoshop, you can basically watch any tutorial video and you get the same sense of how this program is going to function. But my one gripe with Photopia, which is really minor considering it has, it's basically free Photoshop. But the one gripe I would have would be a lack of the field blur. For example, you come over to filter, blur, then normally there'd be a blur gallery here in Photoshop, but we don't see that and there's no field blur either which is really the only thing I'd really complain about, and it's, it's really minor. And of course, some of these features aren't as refined as it would be in Photoshop, but again, just about everything that Photoshop does, Photopia can do at a lesser scale, but it's going to be hard to notice there's a difference unless you're doing something really, really complex, which most of the banners or all of the banners on my channel can all be made in Photopia perfectly fine, you're not going to have any issues as far as I'm aware. So like in Photoshop, you can come over to this left side and hold down the left mouse button to pop up more options. In this case, I'm going to start with the rectangle tool, so I'm going to click that. I'm just going to drag it down. Keep in mind, I did create a new layer by coming down to the corner, creating a new layer, just so there is a layer for this shape to visualize itself on. Because unlike Photoshop, which I just noticed a second ago, you have to explicitly create the new layer. It's not going to create the new layer for you like Photoshop does. Now here, if you want to pop up properties, you can go over to window and scroll down to properties, wherever it's at, there it goes, or you can just click properties here on the right side. So with properties popped up, we can go over to live shape. And if you want to curve the edges, let's say 60 pixels, that's now curved. We adjust the width and the height, so on and so forth. I haven't seen, oh, nope, there it is, it has it. So if you hold control on your keyboard and you drag left to right with your mouse, after clicking down, of course, you can adjust the settings here. If you don't wanna keep the aspect ratio, you can click that and it'll adjust just the heights. But if you wanna keep it, click it, it's gonna adjust both the width and the height for you. Cool, 
out of the way. Let's say we want to create a new layer. So let's do that. We can right click, do a clipping mask. Now anything we put on this layer is going to appear on this one right below it. Let's say we want to add an ellipse this time. It's about that size and we want to make it blue. We can go ahead and do that as well. And we also click on this actual color right there to pop up more settings. And we have the hex codes that we need to put in if we want to do that. So it looks like it unclipped itself, but we can simply do a right click and clipping mask once again. And that is absolutely perfect. And right click blending options. We have all the same settings that Photoshop would have bevels, strokes, and let's make it a white stroke. So that's one little fault I found. Make sure you close out of the initial color picker. Otherwise, it's going to be a little confused as to what's going on. Then we can adjust this down and then adjust this around. So we can add a drop shadow. As you can see, the settings are basically the same as Photoshop. So what I do in Photoshop, we can just copy over to Photopia. Keeps it really simple for you. And it's honestly really convenient. Again, I'm not sure how any of this is legal. I assume it isn't, but why complain for a free tool? Just like Photoshop, we can just control V in any shape that we copied and adjust this around. Now if we transform here as control alt T, or you can go over to image and transform and then free transform or edit, sorry, edit free transform. And we can rotate this around. I say rotate, but then I don't even rotate it. I resized it. And you can hold alt and then scroll with your mouse wheel to move in and out. So we can rotate this, do all kinds of funky things with it, or we can hold shift to keep at 15 degree intervals. So it's super, super nifty. So let's put that right there, click the check mark, lock it in place, then right click and clip mask that as well. And we can unclip mask that, and now we have an interesting image right there. So really overall, this is quite obviously just a Photoshop clone, which I've repeated so many times in this video already, but I can't recommend Photopia enough. It's so much better than everything else I review on the channel. I would even say it's on par with the GIMP. That might be a bit of a stretch because GIMP does offer a lot of its own features, probably more than Photopia has itself. But just due to the fact that Photopia is so similar to Photoshop and the easeability for you as a editor or a viewer to actually go through and follow the tutorial step by step without having to pay anything, Photopia is perfect for that purpose. So that really marks the end of this video. I not going to mention in every single future tutorial to use Photopia if you don't want to pay for Photoshop or can't afford Photoshop, but I hope this video will at least get you interested and put aside any excuses of I can't afford Photoshop, I can't follow along with GIMP, mobile doesn't work, well mobile doesn't ever really work with complex designs like this, but you get the idea. And I hope you have an awesome day.